Hey everyone, today we're gonna to talk about the Labyrinth's two envelopes and how they affect the sound. So right now I have a fairly neutral setting. The only thing that's going on is VCO1 is coming through. So as I just said, there are only two envelopes for the Labyrinth and their controls are right here. Now you'll notice that you can't adjust the attack at all. It has a fixed attack, a very fast attack, an immediate attack, but you can adjust the decay of both. So right off the bat, I immediately think when you can't adjust the attack of an envelope, that it's probably gonna be used for some type of percussive voice. Now, of course, you can use the labyrinth for other things, but I think you'll hear me say time and time again that I think this fits into a sort of percussive voice really well. I think that's where it shines. And one of the reasons is, is that you can't adjust the attack time of the envelopes. Either way, so there's two envelopes. The second envelope is attached to the two VCAs. Now, I might have mentioned earlier that there is a VCA where you can control the volume and everything comes out. There's actually really two, and that's because of the parallel processing. So because you can set this to uh, process the signal in parallel, there's really a VCA attached to the wave folder and a VCA attached to the filter. But they act so much in tandem that in my mind, I just think of it as one VCA. And it's controllable right here with envelope two. The sound is stretched out longer when you turn it up and shorter when you turn it down. Envelope one, on the other hand, can modulate many things and there's four different attenuverters to control how much it affects things. It can affect the VCO frequency right here. It can affect the frequency of the mod VCO right here, the wave folder and the cutoff. So basically, if you don't know what an envelope is, it's a quick trigger that in this case immediately goes up and then will go down at the rate you set the decay to. So that's particularly useful when you modulate frequency when you're trying to emulate percussive sounds. And that's because if you think of like a mallet hitting a drum or a stick hitting a drum, there's an immediate spike in the pitch right at the beginning and then it'll slowly come back actually very quickly come back to the tone at which the drum is tuned to. So if we're trying to create a percussive voice, we would want it to have a little bit of a, a bounce in the frequency. So let's turn up our envelope. And you can already hear it sounds a little bit more percussive. And if we add some noise to it, maybe even turn down the VCA, VCO frequency, that's how you make percussive voices. If we were to turn off the envelope amount or set it to noon so that the, the this envelope isn't affecting the frequency, it still sounds a little bit like a drum, but not as much. Doesn't have that punch right at the attack. You can also make the envelope go in a negative direction. So in this case, it sounds like a drop. So what's happening is the second you trigger it, it's almost like turning the stop way down and then having it come up slowly. So if I turn the decay way up just to, to accent that. So that since the decay here is a little bit slower, it's almost like as if I were twisting this knob down and then slowly bringing it back up. And you can do that on both of these VCOs. So 
So there's a lot to play with. If you turn off, for instance, the, the envelope amount right here, but because my VCO frequency amount is up, it's still going to affect it differently. Let's listen to the ring mod. That's kind of cool because the mod VCO, I've set the envelope to the negative on the attenuverter, but the main VCO, I've set it to the positive. So they're kind of going in opposite directions. Let's try it the other way. Fun stuff. Either way, that's how those work. You could do the same thing over here. Now you'll notice on these knobs it says envelope generator one or CV amount for both of these. And that's because if you go over to the patch bay, you can actually patch in and then this will be an attenuverter to whatever you've patched in. I'll get into that in the patch bay section. Since nothing's patched in here, our envelope is what comes out here. And this controls how much it affects the wave folder or the cutoff. So without it affecting it at all, Let's go back to just our main VCO. For... So you can hear how the wave folder is affecting it. Let's turn up the envelope. So you can still hear that kind of pulse width modulation as this goes up and slowly creeps back down. And of course, this affects things more if you have a more complex waveform. I really like using envelopes on cutoff amounts, especially if the resonance is turned up. Let's listen to what that sounds like. So here I have the cutoff frequency very low and if I were to trigger it, you can barely hear it but if I turn up the envelope, it starts to come through. And if we go in the opposite direction, you're gonna to wanna to turn your cutoff up to start. So there's lots of fun things you can do with it. The other thing to know is that the trigger is always triggering both of the envelopes at the same time. So even when you're running your sequencer, they're both being triggered at the same time. So that's it for today. In the next video, we're gonna get into our fun sequencer. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe below and I'll see you next time. <laughs>